Good morning, everyone. <coughs> Welcome to Grace Street Worship this morning. To those of you in person in house here, and to those of you joining us through live stream. My name is Kathy Welby, and I chair the worship team here. This morning is it's it's a great morning, and, and second of all, welcome to anybody that's visiting with us today. We've got some visitors with us today, so that's super, super exciting. Today we are celebrating Children's Sunday on the church calendar. And um, when I went on, on the site, just to bring a little bit more of it, um, Children's Sunday is usually the Sunday closest to November 20th. And it lifts up the needs and celebrates the gifts of young people in our communities and around the word, world. So we will, that's what we'll be celebrating today. So it's lots of fun. You've got the balloons and the animals and, and so, so welcome. We will start now with the gathering song, Come Let Us Worship God. Cheryl mm -hmm. will lead us with that. And this is our last Sunday for it. So um, sing, out. sing out with gusto. Yeah. <laughs> sing boldly. <laughs> to the screen. Uh, I would also say that for folks that are maybe visiting with us for the first time, any font that's up in yellow is usually the leader, and any font in white is, is said by all. Phones. 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 All the phones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you have a cell phone, if you wouldn't mind switching it to airplane mode, we'd appreciate it. We have a little technical difficulty with, with the AV stuff with that. So that would be appreciated. Thank you. Okay, on we go to the territorial acknowledgement and I invite you all to say this with me. Today we gather for worship in Treaty 1 territory. Treaty 1 was signed by our forebears and First Nations. As treaty settler people, we acknowledge that we have benefited from that treaty in terms of land and rich resources. It is our responsibility as Canadians, and especially as Christians, to walk with respect, to seek justice, and to honour all peoples of this land. So I have three brief announcements this morning. Next Saturday, November 25th, 2pm, do you all know where you're going to be? At Emmanuel United Church, to begin the Tepejigan group, is hosting a pre-Advent gathering. Great way to introduce you to our Advent theme that's going to be shared between all seven churches. There's going to be crafts, and Luann and her kitchen crew are serving up comfort food. So it's sort of a mid-afternoon, you might want to hold off on lunch to come, or you might think that that's an early supper for you. So <laughs> bring your kids, bring your neighbor's kids, bring your grandkids, Come and have fun. We're really trying to uh, promote, promote this collaboration. Then the next day, you can recover by not coming to church at 10.30 and wait till 3. And we're going to have our worship service. And within that worship service is the coveting uh, between ourselves and Ginny. And it's our, our official welcome to her and our promises to work with her 
till June. So that's at three o'clock, so you get to sleep in. And then the last, um, the last thing I wanted to say was today, I hope you're all staying for soup. And it's uh, an open free will offering and all monies collected today will go to our mission and service goal for the year. So we hope that uh, everyone stays with us. I think that's it for the announcements today. So this morning we're going to light the candle of Christ to celebrate all that Jesus brought into our world and the example his life provided to us about how to live our lives. Jesus honored the children, all children. So let us do the same. <coughs> We're all going to join together. You can stand as you're able to sing our first hymn for the morning, More Voices 48, I Can Feel You Near Me, God. So let us uh, join together and call one another to worship and offer a prayer. Today we celebrate the children of our congregation, David, James, Shannon, Sean, Charlie, Dex, and there are a few more. <laughs> we come to give thanks for the children in our lives, in our communities, and in our world. All children are being mistreated and harmed. Holy God, we seek your guidance and give thanks for the gifts of children bring to the world. And we're going to have the children up here. Uh, just before, you can come up though, right now, and I'll meet you up here. Um, a couple of things. I will be in Toronto uh, to conduct a funeral for a good friend. So I'm leaving on Tuesday, I'll be back on Friday. I can be reached by cell phone, no problem. I'll have access to email. And Patrick Woodbeck is covering if there's any critical issue around pastoral care. So you can either call Stacy in the office or you, I suppose you could call Kathy, okay? If, if that, heaven forbid, happens. Um, this is the last week we're going to use the prayer board as a board. Uh, come the 1st of December, there'll be a book at the back for our prayers so that when you come in, you can. there'll be the same headings so you can record your prayers there and then when the offering comes up, the book will come up so that I have the prayers. So just so you know that. And where are the kids? I need kids. 
Did I miss something? Yeah. What did I miss? Oh, that's true. Right after this? Sure. <laughs> you think I was new at this. <laughs> okay. Can you find a place to sit? How about right here? And right, can you get in by my big feet? Yeah? Okay, a couple of things we have to talk about today. First of all, when it gets to be December, we're going to be meeting all of the animals that might have been around the stable where Jesus was born, right? So we'll, we'll do that come the 1st of December when Advent starts, yeah. But today, there's one animal that has to go a long distance. This is Camilla, not Camilla. This is Camilla, the camel. And she has to go pick up one of those wise guys, the wise men, and they're in the east. So she has to get going now before Christmas. And then we don't see her until after Christmas again. So she'll go off to the east, but I wanted you to at least know that she, you can touch her, she won't bite. It's kind of soft, isn't she? Yeah, you wanna play with her? <laughs> Um, and then in a few minutes, I'm going to read the scripture reading, which is very short, and it's about the uh, Good Samaritan. Now, I don't know if you know that story, but there was a fellow traveling, and he got hurt on the road, and he was kind of lying there, and a couple of people walked by, and they didn't help him, which we thought was kind of strange, but they didn't, right? They just walked by. But along came the third fella, and he decided, he saw the man lying on the ground, and he decided he needed some help. So he stopped and he helped, and he got the man up, I suppose it was a donkey they were riding. He got him up on the donkey, and he took him, where we would take him to a hospital, he took him to a place where he could be looked after. And he paid for, oh, here come two more. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so when you go to the back, <clears throat> the service is kind of short today on purpose, but when you go to the back, there are three pieces of paper for you. The first one is something you can do today. It involves coloring according to numbers, and then it'll show you a message. The second piece is for you to take home, okay? Hey, hi, Charlie. Hi, can you find, how about up here? Can you find a place to sit? Oh, good fella. Okay, thank you. Um, and so you take it home. Yeah. And uh, it's for I when, dog. yeah. <laughs> that dog's name is Poopsie. 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 It's like pooping on a stupid glass. <laughs> I didn't name him. <laughs> um, and so when you take it home, it's for you to keep track. Every time you help somebody, you put a little tick or you color in one. Yeah, you color. Okay, just a minute to let me talk, okay? Can you let me talk? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so every time you help somebody, you color in or you put a mark on one of the uh, hands okay and the third piece is something you can do while we're having soup and it helps us get to know one another so it's a whole list of questions and you have to go around and ask people if they fit and you put their name beside it oh so if the adults want to do that too i have some extra sheets we can play too Well, you'll probably need your dad to help you with that. Okay? Okay, so we're going to hear from the choir. And you might want to just sit in the front here so you can hear the choir because they've got a really funny song to sing. Okay? I need to keep this one. I had a trouble finding a spider. <laughs> okay, so how about you go sit and then when the choir's finished, you can go to the back. Okay?
Okay.
And the scripture reading, as I said with the kids, is uh, from the story of the Good Samaritan. A Samaritan traveling the road came on him. When he saw the man's condition, his heart went out to him. He gave him first aid, disinfecting and bandaging his wounds. Then he lifted him onto a donkey and led him to an inn, made him comfortable. In the morning, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper saying, take good care of him. If it costs any more, put it on my bill and I'll pay you back. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Now the reflection uh, today is basically uh, taken from a poem by Anne Weems. Now Anne was a uh, Presbyterian and she and her husband were staff at a Presbyterian church in St. Louis and Anne wrote all kinds of poetry but this one really fits for today. So I'm, it's, it's a little bit long, but I'm gonna read it and then I'll make some comments after. I took to church one morning, a happy four-year-old boy holding a bright blue string to which was attached his much loved orange balloon with pink stripes. Certainly a thing of beauty and if not forever, at least a joy for a very important now. Now when he met me at the door later, clutching the blue string, orange and pink bobbing behind him, he didn't have to tell me something was wrong. What's the matter? He wouldn't tell me. I bet they loved your balloon. And out it came. Mocking the teacher's voice, we don't bring balloons to church. Then that little four-year-old, his lip a little trembly, asked, why aren't balloons allowed in church? I thought God would like balloons. I celebrate balloons, parade and chocolate chip cookies. I celebrate seashells and elephants and lions that roar. I celebrate roasted marshmallows and chocolate cake and fresh fish, well, kind of. <laughs> I celebrate aromas, bread baking, and mincemeat, and lemons. I celebrate seeing bright colors, wheat in a field, and tiny wild flowers. I celebrate hearing waves pounding, the rain's rhythm, and soft voices. I celebrate touching, toes in the sand, a kitten's soft fur, another person. I celebrate the sun that shines slab dab in our faces. I celebrate the crashing thunder and brazing lightning. And I celebrate the green of the world, the life-giving green, the hope-giving green. I celebrate birth, the wonder, the miracle of that tiny life already asserting its selfhood. I celebrate children who laugh out loud who walk in the mud and dawdle in puddles, who put chocolate fingers everywhere, who like to be tickled, who scribble in church, who whisper in loud voices, who sing in louder voices, who run and laugh when they fall, who cry at the top of their lungs, who cover themselves with band-aids, who squeeze the toothpaste all over the bathroom, who slurp their soup, who chew cough drops, who ask questions, who give us sticky paste covered creations, who want their picture taken and who won't use napkins, who bury goldfish, sleep with the dog, scream at their best friend, who hug us in a hurry and rush outside without their hats. I celebrate children who are so busy living they don't have time for our hangups. And I celebrate adults who are as little children. I celebrate the one who breaks up the meaningless routines of life. The one who stops to reflect, to question, to doubt. The one who isn't afraid to feel. The one who refuses to play mind games. I celebrate anger at injustice. I celebrate tears for the mistreated 
the hurt, the lonely. I celebrate the community that cares, the church. I celebrate the church. I celebrate those times when in the church we made it, when we answered a cry, when we held to our warm, well-fed bodies a lonely, weary world. I celebrate the times when we let God get through to our hiding places, through our maze of meetings, our pleasant facade, deep down into our selfhood, deep down where we really are. Call it heart, soul, naked self, it's where we hide, deep down, away from God and away from each other. I celebrate the times when the church is the church, when we are Christians, when we are living, loving, contributing God's children. I celebrate that God calls us God's children even when we're in hiding. I celebrate the love, the moments when we is more important than I. I celebrate the perfect love, the cross, the Christ. Loving in spite of giving without reward, I celebrate the music within a person that must be heard. I celebrate life that we may live more abundantly. Where did we get the idea that balloons don't belong in church? Where did we get the idea that God loves gray and shh and grab and anything will do? I think it's blasphemy not to appreciate the joy in God's world. I think it's blasphemy not to bring joy into church. For God so loved the world, loving the unlovable, what beautiful gift cannot be offered unto God. Whether it's a balloon or a song or some joy that sits within us waiting to have the lid taken off. The scriptures say there's a time to laugh and a time to weep and it's not hard to see the reasons for crying in a world where hatred is so manifest. So celebrate, bring your balloons and your butterflies, your bouquets of flowers, bring the torches and hold them high, dance your dances, paint your feelings, sing your songs, whistle and laugh. Life is a celebration, an affirmation of God's love. Life is distributing even more balloons for God so loved the world. Surely that's a cause for joy. Surely we should celebrate. Good news, that God should love us that much. Where did we ever get the idea that balloons don't belong in church? And that's the end of Anne. <laughs> I remember one Easter Sunday morning in church as my friend Meg was delivering her reflection and musing about the significance of the stone being rolled away. A little guy stood up in the balcony and loudly declared, hands on hips, well, I know how it happened, he said. The place was on a hill and it just rolled down. Why do you adults make everything so complicated, he said. And he sat down. And another time, one of the children at Little Britain where I was serving told me, Ginny, I had a dream about God last night. I said, oh, did you see God? I've always wondered what God looks like. Sure, he says. God looked just like me, except he had red hair. <laughs> and yes, we giggled. But there's wisdom here. Why do we adults make things so complicated? Not about the grave site, perhaps, but about life. Why do we think, think we have to seek revenge when we could just love one another? Why do we believe that some people are better than others? In that belief lies all the isms, racism, ableism, ageism, consumerism, and all the others. And within, <clears throat> within that one belief, lies the seeds of violence and war and the ability to do harm to one another and to the earth. Why don't we understand that we're to love and that within that judgment of others and the world lies sin? And isn't God's Holy Spirit within each of us? Why wouldn't 
we think that God should look like each of us to each of us. If we believed that we really were the face of God in our world, wouldn't that change our behavior? Jesus showed us that life really is simple. Seek justice, love one another, have faith, live with compassion and kindness and help each other. Live a life of laughter and love, of wisdom and adventure, of gratitude and grace. God is here and God is still speaking. So let us open our ears to hear the wisdom of the children and each other because that's how we'll hear the voice of God in our midst. Let us be absolutely sure that balloons do in fact belong in church. I'd go so far to say we can't be the church if we think they don't. Amen. So, Voices United 361, Small Things Count. you can help with this please <laughs> to bring up the offering plate now and as it comes up we're going to be singing for the gift of creation and when you get to the front by all the animals here if you just stand and wait for a minute I'll do a little prayer then you can give me the plate and you can go back to the back as we honor the children among us and we worry about the children around our world, we bring you our offering. Help us, Holy God, to use these dollars and cents and our lives to better your world. Amen. Thank you. Okay, you can go to the back now. Thank you. <laughs> and as we gather, then let us breathe deeply of God's gift of life to us and bring our hearts and our minds to a time of prayer together. So let us pray. Holy God, as we come, we give you thanks for sunshine. We especially today thank you for the children, for the children who offer us wisdom and laughter and pure and simple joy. We thank you that this is the month of giving, a chance for us to help others. 
We give you thanks for medical personnel, and particularly today do we thank you for groups like Doctors Without Borders, who continually put themselves in the midst of danger to try and save people's lives. We give you thanks for all those who helped with the balloons and for all those who made soup and for Poopsie. <laughs> As we come, there are lots of worries about our world. We pray for all of the places in our world where children are being harmed. We pray for Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank and Israelis in Israel. And particularly, do we worry about the violence taking place around the hospital in Gaza? We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia as they battle one another. And as Afghanis continue to deal with the impact of earthquakes and Hawaiians with wildfires that destroyed their part of their island, we pray for them. We pray for all places where there's flooding and drought, where people live without enough. And holy God, we pray for our weary world. There are lots of people we hold in our hearts and we name a few of them. The Gottfried family and the loss of John. The Donst and Grieve family and the loss of Meg. Kim, George, Gary, Juliet, Joanne, and Teresa. And Holy God, hear us now as we offer to you in silence those prayers that lie so deep within us but have not yet been given voice. Holy One, we offer to you now a paraphrase of the word, words which Jesus taught us to pray to you. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The ways of justice be followed by peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. And as we sing, let us make a joyful noise. Voices United 820. <laughs>
And let us commission one another as we read these words together. <clears throat> let us go into the world daring to let children lead, partnering with friends and neighbors as we seek God's justice and peace for our weary, troubled world. And may God, who loves us from our burning cry, go with us. May Jesus, who welcomes us into relationship, stay with us. And may the Spirit's persistent call for peace be with us this day, this week, and always. Amen. Before we leave this place, but we're not leaving this place because you are staying for soup, aren't you? <laughs> I just want to say uh, thank you to everyone for our soup makers, our bun makers, our pastry makers, our delicious desserts sitting there, uh, to everyone who helped make coffee, to you all being here, not only to support the children in our world, uh, but to help feed them as well. And that's what Mission and Service does, is we help everyone here and abroad. Give us a few seconds to get our cooks gathered, and we'll uh, have some good fellowship together and break the bread. Thank you. And if you want to do what the kids are going to be doing, uh, walking around asking questions to find the answers to these uh, uh, questions, you can participate as well. I guess I'm not on. You can participate as well. I'll leave copies uh, up on the uh, piano so you can pick one up. It's just fun. And you don't have to do it, but it's fun. 